And it's time for the business news now with Nicholas Poynton. Nicholas, MetLife, this long drawn out process to find a buyer, is it finally come to a conclusion? It's finally conclusion? come to an end today. Voters, they voted overwhelmingly to support this deal, to, to accept a $6 uh, per share offer from a Swedish backed priv- private equity firm called EQT. But it's sort of how we got to the stage. That's sort of the real story in all of this because this what what uh, shareholders what shareholders have accepted is at the lower end of an independent valuation that was done earlier this year, which valued the company at between five dollars eighty and six dollars ninety. But at the beginning of the year, there was an offer on the table from the same firm for seven dollars a share. But the firm EQT they really they pulled the plug on that when COVID hit. They evoked what is known as a material adverse change clause. They felt like COVID nineteen had dramatically effect, affected the value of this company. However, at the time, MetLife Care, they really disagreed and they filed legal proceedings at the High Court and they were, they were getting ready to argue argue over this. But the planned litigation to renegotiate a deal, that was scuppered when MetLife Care's biggest shareholder, that is uh, the New Zealand Superannuation Fund, they own about 20% of this company, they actually negotiated terms with EQT to put another deal on the table. And that was that deal that we got here, $6 a share. And it put the board in a really interesting position because, you know, their biggest shareholder, they've agreed to this deal. It was starting to get the support of the big institutional investors. But the company's chair came straight out and rejected the offer. It told shareholders they shouldn't accept this offer because it's he felt like it wasn't a good valuation of the company. However, it was put to shareholders today and they voted and they accepted it mainly because of the messages that other board members were sending that this was a take it or leave it offer. And given the material uncertainty that we're seeing in the economy at the moment, shareholders essentially took heed and they and they voted accordingly. So it's a long end to a really interesting saga. You can sort of go into detail here and there. But look, I think it'd be really interesting to actually sit down with NZ Super because they played a really key role in all of this. Okay. Consumer confidence. It continues to kind of hover around levels that are equivalent to the global financial crisis, does it? Yeah, well, I think it's really interesting that, you know, you mentioned that later in the program tonight you've got a story on house prices. So yep. what we're seeing is that people's appetite for housing is going up, but their appetite to actually buy the stuff to put inside the house is actually really, really low. And that's shown here in ANZ's latest consumer confidence survey. It shows the index. It's, uh, it didn't budge from August to September. It's still at 100, a reading of 100 on this index, which is well below its historical average of 120. Interestingly, the number of people who thought it was a good time to purchase a major household item, ANZ really takes this as a, as a really good indicator of uh, consumer confidence. Mm. It increased slightly, but it's still at levels consistent with the recession. Uh, we, we, we saw households also, their perception of their current situation also take a step backwards. And that's the third consecutive month we've seen this in the survey. I spoke to ANZ senior economist today, Liz Kendall. She says families, they're really dealing with the fact those wage subsidies, they're coming to an end. And families who work in you know, really specific sectors that have been affected by the pandemic, they're really dealing with a tourism-sized hole in the economy. And they feel, and Liz Kendall, she was saying that how many households, they're going to actually have to start scaling back their spending because as a country, we're getting poorer. We are poorer as a result of is what we've seen in these GDP numbers. And it's, you know, there's no real bright spot to this, but it's going to be a while before things start to get better. What about the numbers on the market today? Well, here's some good news. The NZX Top 50, it's up by 10 points to 11,822. Our own dollar is at 66.3 US cents, 92.6 Australian, 51.5 British pence. And gold is down $11 to 1,893 US dollars an ounce. Thanks, Nicholas. Nicholas Poynton with business.